the Simpsons Index, an online spreadsheet that is also a podcast. This is the podcast. Coming to you out of SideQuest Studios, this is The Simpsons Index, episode 232. Hello out there, I'm your host Elliot Jaranil, and joining me, returning champion is Rosie Piper. Hello. And brand new champion, Jacinda Gregory. Hi. Welcome to The Simpsons Index, we review Simpsons, old and new, all across the eras, but before we get into that, we like to ask our new first time, amazing, wonderful guest, where did the show begin with you? What is your Simpsons history? Okay, I have been a Simpsons fan since before I can remember forming sentences properly. Um, So it all started when I was about three, I think three or four. And I have this very clear memory of being like, I don't want to watch that show. It looks boring. It doesn't look as fun as like the other (laughs) cartoons I watch. And my older sisters were like, you have to watch it. It's good. And I was like, no. And then they dragged me to the TV and they were like, watch this episode. I'm pretty sure it was the Valentine's Day Apu episode. Anyways, I watched it. I liked it. And then I was like, I like this show a lot. And then I watched the videotapes that we made on our own on repeat. And thus you have the person that is on this podcast today. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, I I wanted to invite you on the show because especially, yeah, met you after a gig and, um, yeah, got onto the topic of The Simpsons very quickly because <laughs> it's us. and <laughs> That's all I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's a part of us all. Um, <laughs> it's a part of us all. <laughs> um, and yeah, you showed me your Simpsons tattoos, which mm-hmm. not going to be great for the podcast format, no. but still amazing nonetheless. Totally. You can post it on your story or something, but I yeah. will say, I will say humble brag. Well, full brag, full brag. <laughs> it was, they were the top of the Simpsons Reddit, actually, which is pretty oh, really? hard to get. Actually, pretty hard to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For mm. like a few few days oh wow that's like yeah it's like my top reddit post but i don't like to talk about it <laughs> I, don't like to, I don't like to bring it up but now i don't like that to take here. people to my reddit page i'm posting some really bad <laughs> stuff on there oh actually that's so true please don't find my reddit page i think there's one being like how do you get over a breakup in the breakup reddit <laughs> i mean i've been that close to posting that so <laughs> throw um, away account that you forgot to throw away sort of thing or <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i mean i i kind of lay it all out there i don't i don't believe in throwaways by principle i have no secrets for the benefit of the listener, what are your tatters? Oh, yes, true. Um, so one is Lisa Simpson playing on her peach tree um, from the Maison Derriere episode. And if you have forgotten the reference, it's where she's like, I'd like to clean these rocks. It's such a bizarre B-plot. Sorry, bizarre B-plot. But I just think this one yeah. gag is really funny, which is Marge saying, look, we already got you this peach tree and that was already your birthday and Christmas present. Yeah. And, and she's like, and you never play with that anymore. And she's like, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I do and she goes outside and then she plays on it and she's like la 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 playing on my peach tree playing with so, a peach tree it's so funny <laughs> anyways it's like Marge looking out the window and the corn on the cob um oh, what yeah. is it yeah. curtains yeah and the whole scene and then the other one is Homer and Bart and it says here's your turtle alive and well with a banner <laughs> yeah thank you no, they're amazing detail and the colouring on them is like, am- like how long did those take? Because like, mm. yeah, generally like my tattoos take like a- an hour at most because I-, I don't do colour and I just yeah. do basic black shit. Yes, uh, yeah. yes, that's fair. I think the first one took about three hours and then the second a little bit less. And and also, I mean, maybe it didn't actually take that long, but that was my first big colour tattoo. So I was in so much pain. Yeah, because <laughs> like, I have like, to dig in This for is the crazy. Color, yeah. yeah, just because they're like really colouring it in, even though it was, it's in like my thigh, which is a not that painful painful spot just the amount of stuff that they have to do to make it good anyways this girl from melbourne did it and her name is melanie milne and she's great i feel like i should do a shout out because it's really good and she did both of them yep oh awesome Mm. and now where are you with the show now are you still watching the new episodes do you Mm -hmm. go back and check out the old ones all the time where Um, where are you at with the show now i don't watch the new episodes i'm very i'm a purist so i stopped (laughs) watching after season 13 kind of i cut like that was when it started dwindling and all of the simpsons community was like it's bad now and i was like okay i believe that i'll go with the go with the flow so yeah, so this is the first time I've watched a new one like ever since, yeah, since wow. 13. But I watch the old ones from like, yeah, the first season to 13 all the time. Yeah, all the time. Oh, and, and how about you, Rosie? Yeah, it's been a while since we've had you on the pod. Of uh, my uh, throwing the new episodes at you encouraged you to go check out more or? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like of the new episodes that I've had to watch for this, mm. I feel like th- this was the most palatable. Sure. Mm. But like still not redeemable enough to make you want to go and watch them and how bad the other ones have been 
Absolutely not. And like, why would you <laughs> when like you could go and watch the old ones, which are great and it's such reliable comfort food, or you can watch a litany of other good comedies that are still funny and well written, like Bob's yeah. Burgers Amazing and new cartoons, like, like Big Mouth and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. Shit's crazy out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, have you checked out the new season yet? Uh, how, I have. Um, yeah. How is? I liked it. I thought it was better than the previous couple. Yeah. Cool. I I still don't think they've quite hit the heights of the first two. Yeah. But I I enjoyed it. Like, yeah. Because I, I found it like I don't know just a little bit of a wall there because like I tried to watch Human Resources and I just couldn't get into it. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I quite liked Human Resources. Yeah, no, I should push through. I only did like one and a half episodes, maybe. But yeah, that like there is a good little emotional arc that happens throughout the season of that with like the love bug that's played by Aidy Bryant, I think. Oh, love Aidy. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. If I can push through this much, Simpsons having reviewed <laughs> six hundred and fifty of the fucking things so far, yeah. yeah, surely I can give yeah ten episodes of that a chance. Yeah. I've, I've wondered this question. I was thinking this recently because like Bob's Burgers has become a real kind of like comfort watch for me, mm. and like there's now what like thirteen or fourteen seasons of that. Mm. Like, at what point does it get viewed as like? being a better thing overall because like it's i don't think it's ever been as good as like the golden era of the simpsons but it's still good yeah okay so you're saying as in cartoons that have like a more long-standing consistent good quality yeah can you compare it to the simpsons because overall the yeah. quality has dwindled yeah Ooh. i don't know maybe it's comparing apples and oranges <laughs> or comparing the Simpsons and Family Guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, Family Guy throughout its 21 seasons has remained a perfect show. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but no, uh, I think uh, it's actually remained uh, freaking sweet. <laughs> I like when he says, shut up, Meg. And, and it's, it's funny. It's funny. <laughs> and the baby's gay. <laughs> Baby can't be gay. (laughs) I'll tell you what, though. My nephew is like just about to turn three, Mm. and I've like I've put it on the record that like I think he's gay because I'm going to be so vindicated if it turns out I was right. Oh, you gotta you gotta say it early. Yeah. I'm pretty sure my nephew's gay. I can never show him this podcast episode. Like, <laughs> oh, insane that out loud. But it's on the record. But now. it's on the record, yeah, and it's yeah, important yeah. that I say it. He just really like he has the same qualities that I did when I was younger, which is I had like all of these women, like all these posters of women on my walls, mm. and I was like, I just love them. I just want to be them. And he has all these posters of basketballers, like really buff basketballs, and he's like, <laughs> I just want to be them. And I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't buy it. <laughs> okay, little work king. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, with Bob's Burgers, I think it's like it's always maintained that like reliable B grade or like a silver sort of ranking if you're using our scale, like, mm. and that it's lack of ambition to not do big bombastic episodes, and it just like mostly like stays within their town and the restaurant and. Unlike The Simpsons, they're just always poor. Like, one of the problems mm. with The Simpsons is, where are they getting the fucking money? How mm. is Homer taking time off work to do this job this time? <laughs> you know? Exactly, exactly. That's Well, that's it, isn't it? The new seasons in comparison to the old. I'm sure you've talked about this a lot. I can't imagine how much. But it's the heart. It's the heart that's missing. Mm. It's yeah. the heart that made it so good in the first, oh, in the first ten seasons, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's part of, like, the Bob's Burgers appeal, I think, mm. is there's so much heart. It's just... A shitty little family that love each other. No, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, let, uh, we'll get into something from the first 10 seasons. But first, we must do the new shit. Okay. <laughs> so we just reviewed an episode from what we call the Disney era. This was season 33, episode one, The Star of the Backstage. First released in September of 2021. It was directed by Rob Oliver, written by Elizabeth Kiernan Averick. Uh, in this episode, Marge reunites her old high school theatre troupe to put on their Millennium Y2K musical and uh, one of the old <laughs> students comes back to town and it's a big musical episode. <laughs> it's funny to watch your face reading that plot line. <laughs> I'm just trying to remember, just like, did I remember this right? Like, Because <laughs> yeah. it's still sort of that weird dissonance of... Okay, here's The Simpsons doing a plot line of yeah. when Marge and Homer were in high school and they were doing a Y2K music. Wait, what? <laughs> that was the first thing that like really didn't mm. track for me because I'm like, didn't they go to high school in the 70s or something like that? Like, yeah. The yeah. computers were barely a thing, let alone Y2K. Also, it like, was... Has, has they, have they just like 
moved the timeline now that it's been on for so long? Yeah, they kind of moved the timeline. I mean, I heard bits and pieces that they went to college now. I thought the whole thing was that this was in college. They were in college during Y2K. Or were they in high school? Did I completely Uh, just get that wrong? uh, I might have screwed up that detail. I'm not sure. No, that's cool. No, no, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. But I thought that was like, because they just, yeah, they moved the timeline totally. Mm. I can't believe this. They, (laughs) they, They had their little like 70s collars. Hello. Like, and they had their little prom with the frilly collars and their suits were so cute. Dude. No, yeah. I just I felt like such a fucking annoyed little nerd on the internet watching it, just being like, "Oh, this is inconsistent." And this <laughs> like, Does anyone care what this guy thinks? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> me to me, me to me. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, we're used to it now because yeah, yeah, New Simpsons. They've long, long since stopped caring about the whole continuity thing, and mm. yeah, there was famously that '90s show where yeah, Homer started grunge, and then mm. recently, I haven't seen it yet, but there was an episode where Homer's in high school and he's really into naughty by nature. Um, <laughs> Um, and he's <laughs> Homer's a big hip hop fan. Like, sure. I kind of don't hate the sound of that one actually. <laughs> no, sometimes they make it work. But I mean, overall impression. What did we think of this one? I was, I think, pleasantly surprised is my takeaway, just in the sense that I really was expecting total garbage and for my heart to be ripped out of my chest. I think it's still bad. I think yeah. my overall <laughs> impression is that it is still not good. And just like, oh, just hearing some of the ways that they talk in the episode. I'm like, this isn't their character voices, isn't their character voices. Mm, But, you know, I'm so out of it. I haven't watched any of the new episodes. But I think Marge said at one point when they were talking about having a party at her house and she wasn't there, the rest of her theatre troupe, and she's like, guys, that's like really bad. And I'm like, she wouldn't say that. And she wouldn't say it like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She would not memeify Marge. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, it was fucked. Like, yeah, it's like I said before, like it's better than new stuff. But I think it's because like I like musicals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like by virtue of the fact that this was a musical made it yeah. more entertaining to watch. But like all the bits with the dialogue were terrible. Like I think the only time I laughed was like, when Mo bashed his head against the wall. <laughs> like just Yeah, after Barney, uh, it was revealed Barney had a hot, hot tub night with uh, Sarah Chase, the uh, yeah. guest star of this episode, played by Sasha Reed, who was uh, yeah. uh, most notable for playing uh, Cindy in The Unbreakable Kimmy, Kimmy Schmidt. Schmidt. Yeah. 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 And also Kristen Bell, my yep. baby, yeah. doing Marge's voice, which didn't fit, no, but sounded not at really all. nice. Like, <laughs> like, it's fun to hear like Princess Anna on The Simpsons, but like... <laughs> Like, surely you get someone that sort of vaguely sounds just like deep, Marge. Just a deeper voice, if any, or a more mature voice, if anything. Like yeah. Because Julie Kath voice. is quite old now. Like, yeah. yeah. In the 70s, yeah. And, yeah. like, I think, like, it's a cartoon, <laughs> but it felt like watching someone lip sync. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you're yeah, just yeah. so connected to Marge, you're supposed to sound like this. Yeah. No, I had a real hard time processing that. It was like mm. sometimes if you like just have TV on, but you're listening to music or something like that. Yeah. And you're, mm. yeah, you're trying to do the dark side of Wizard of Oz or something like that. Like, yeah. <laughs> have you tried to do that? Uh, I mean, I smoke a lot of weed, of course I have. <laughs> <laughs> Does it work? <laughs> it works when you smoke a lot of weed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we'll start with you, Jacinda. Uh, cool. What's a moment from this episode that stood out to you for better or worse? For better or worse? Okay, a moment that really stood out. Or um, both, whatever. <laughs> hmm, maybe. I. Oh, you know what? I thought the song that Homer sung to Marge, like you have to approach it gently or whatever, like the very cute musical theatre song. I didn't think it was funny. I wasn't laughing, but I thought it was very <laughs> endearing. I thought yeah. it was a good song. <laughs> oh, and also like I got really hopeful when they started doing like the Y2K musical, like 5,000, 25,600 minutes rent yeah. parody. I was like, okay, more of this. Like, I kind of expected maybe like, oh, like a streetcar named Marge. Like it won't Mm. be as good, but it'll be like a whole episode about a fake musical. That's really fun. And then that didn't really happen, which was really disappointing. But I thought the beginning was good. So the beginning and I thought Homer's song was quite sweet. Yeah. 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 I felt like there's like a real tone to like all the musical stuff in The Simpsons where like. And maybe it's just because of, like, the musicals that they're taking off or whatever, but, like, all the stuff about, like, the streetcar named Marge or, like, the Planet of the Apes thing, like, it all feels really campy, Mm. but it didn't here except for that Homer song. Yeah, Yeah, that's true. That felt more, like, 
the musical stuff of the past. Yeah. Yeah, where he is, yeah, complimenting the lyrics by dancing very delicately and mm. um, doing, yeah, really feathery movements. And there's a weird close-up of his toenails at one point. I'm not <laughs> sure what the point of that was, but... Anyway. I think as well, like, Homer is often actually quite dainty. Yeah. Yes. So, like, it was good to, like, see a bit of that. <laughs> oh, go eat some flowers. My secret shame. <laughs> exactly. He's so sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I'll be having to go to you two for the musical references because, yeah, I, I don't see a lot of musicals. I'm not sure. sure. Were there, like, many other songs that were parodied? Like, I knew the uh, whatever number amount of minutes from Rent. Rent. From yeah. Rent, yeah. Um, I mean, the, the couple song was very... I don't know, I guess couple Sondheim-y, but, like, there's so mm. many couple songs in musicals. I think all the, like, references that I picked up on were, like, mentioning stuff like Sondheim or, like, yeah. the Sutton Foster got a shout-out Su- twice. Sutton Foster, Patti Lapone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, twice. Yeah. yeah, twice. Which, like, Sutton Foster is great. Like, love her work. <laughs> Two-time Tony Award winner, but, like... Uh, any chance, uh, anything I might know her from. Uh, that was the one Have reference. Have you seen Flight of the Concords? Uh, oh, no. true. No. She's in that show Younger. But she's like very much like a kind of like yeah. Theater. Well, no, I mean Patty Lapone. The only reason I know her is from Steven Universe, and also she was Frank Rossitano's mother on Thirty Rock. Right. Yeah. Oh, really? There was one sort of musical reference that I liked, which is like when Marge opened up like the memories box or whatever. One of them was like a pamphlet from The Music Man, which is what the Monorail song is from. Oh, oh it's yeah. like a parody yeah. of the Music Man. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. The, yes, sir. There's nothing on earth. That song, right? <laughs> yeah, the yeah, kind yeah. of talk singing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. I think it was like, yeah, Conan O'Brien was just like watching the Music Man. It was like, this is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I need to like put this into an episode. Yeah. Oh, I love those ep- uh, those references that do get buried. Like uh, from that episode where Marge ends up working for the nuclear power plant. That um, when Smithers singing to Mister Burns, that name again. He's Mister Burns. Mm. Like, yeah, that was from Citizen Kane. Really? Yeah, I've never yeah. actually watched really? Citizen Kane. Really? Really? But, I mean, probably, and we reviewed like... Rosebud when you were on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I get enough of the references from yeah. it. I yeah. mean, you basically, you saw Rosebud, you saw Citizen that's, Kane. Well, that's yeah. what I've heard. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I have to bother sitting through all that now? Oh, when I yeah. can just watch that, have a laugh, <laughs> see the Ramones. Yeah. <laughs> 20, if you can't sum it up in 20 minutes, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, and they reference Lin Manuel Miranda, and yeah, yeah. Uh, did uh, y'all know that they did an uh, episode that was sort of a parody of Hamilton, uh, no. somewhat recently that was about Jebediah Springfield, and was it good? No, oh. <laughs> way worse sure. than this. And like once again, Marge was a, a tech behind the scenes on right. that. Uh, yeah, right. Anyway, felt weird continuity wise they didn't acknowledge it. But anyway, that's once again Reddit nerd in me <laughs> yeah. coming yeah, to the surface. What about you, Rosie? What's a moment from this? This episode that stands out to you for better or worse. It's a Reddit nerd thing, I think. The, the, the one that just like really stood out was when Marge was referencing something or whatever, and like Homer went like, "Yeah, but I was cool." And I'm like, no, you no, weren't. No, you weren't. You weren't. Like, <laughs> if anything, Marge was like, Marge wasn't cool in high school, but she was the like kind of like hot girl feminist thing with the like yeah. straight hair or whatever, which was another thing which they pictured her with like the curly hair. I'm like, no, she had straight hair. Yeah, but, like, yeah. That's like such a vivid thing and like something that I say to uh, a previous guest of this podcast a lot, Andrew Hastings, is like the, mm. you're cool, Homer <laughs> Simpson. Like, <laughs> Rose, that was mean. <laughs> <Yeah. Sandra. laughs> like he was so, he was like one of the most uncool people. Like, yeah. Oh, don't they care about <laughs> legacy? <laughs> But yeah, uh, one of the things that stood out to me for better or worse, uh, mm. you mentioned it before, just the voices was a weird hurdle in this episode. Oof. Like, mm. again, I've Oof. done yeah so many fucking reviews of The Simpsons so far, so I'm like used to Julie Kavner not sounding very Marge like. But yeah, weirdly, Harry Shearer's Smithers was a bit off here. Mm-hmm. I noticed that, mm-hmm. yeah. And also, um, sorry, sorry yeah, to interrupt no, no, you. If ahead. we're talking voices, Dr. Hibbert's singing voice? Well, Dr. Hibbert's speaking voice. Well, yeah, as well. yeah, both. Like, both, well, yeah. both. I like I'm aware that they've obviously probably got a black person voicing him now, which is like the right thing to do. But like think of the amount of people in the world and like how many probably like black people there are that could do an impression. Just to make it sound similar. Like, I think Big Mouth did it quite well. Like mm. AO Debris yeah. like yep. does a pretty good yep. Version of like um, Missy's voice, like mm. it just—it was so jarring. 
Like, no, and it's Kevin Michael Richardson who's taken over the role of Dr. Hibbert. Oh, right. I, I don't know if you, you guys know him, no. but yeah, he's a sensational voice actor. Mm. Like, he's sort of like, he's always going to be like the 15th most cast in a thing, but he's been in so many things. Yep. Um, yeah, the name rings a bell. Yeah, he's that default super deep voice that, yeah, they go to. Like, he's been on The Simpsons for like uh, almost 20 years now as well as mm. like, yeah, one of the sort of Maggie Rosewell level sort of cast members. Right. Um, right. Yeah, so that's was... how far removed I am from like watching it there is that I've missed that whole period. Yeah. <laughs> and it's been 20, 20 years. years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's like, that's about right. Like that's where you like Yeah, stopped out, off. Like... Yeah, crazy. <laughs> yeah. But no, I mean, yeah, since the whole problem with our poo thing, they've, yeah, made the effort of making sure, yeah, white people aren't voicing persons of colour and um, they got in Alex Dessert from, um, he played the blind guy in Becca to be Carl now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, is anyone doing a poo or is he just gone? No, they still haven't had him in for like five seasons right, now. Right, for ages. Right. They've just, yeah, totally written him off, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I guess that <laughs> Which makes is like sense. a little bit counterproductive <laughs> though, where you're like, yeah. ended up just like completely losing the like South Asian <laughs> character. Like, so true, so true. I, I was like wondering if they might make it full circle and have Harry Condobolo like um, do the voice now. Like yeah. surely, <laughs> like that. that's such an easy solution is like, hey, we've got shitloads of cash. Like, yeah. Come on. <laughs> So uh, when we're talking about Simpsons and reviewing them, we like to talk about the two pillars that we think define what make The Simpsons so special is the wackiness and the heart and how The Simpsons the cartoon can balance them. So uh, we'll start out with the wackiness. How was the wacky elements of this episode? Yeah. You know, you know, <laughs> they know, <yeah. laughs> you know when someone keeps telling you I'm so quirky but <laughs> but they're not like, that quirky. Oh, like, uh, I don't know if you keep saying it. Like, yeah, like yeah. I feel like that is the vibe of this episode slash I guess New Simpsons in general. It's like a thirteen like year old being like, "Lol, hell, random." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> random. I'm like so weird. Yeah, I'm like yeah. nuts. Like, uh, <laughs> I post memes of like dogs doing silly things. <laughs> like, that's just one of the random crazy things that I do. I don't know. It, it, like, it, it, you don't know the half of it. There are people out there drawing a photo of Shrek fucking like <laughs> Lois Griffin right now. Like. And they're the true heroes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's <laughs> best crossover ever. <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know like it's like it's trying very hard to be like crazy wacky like lots of like random asides and like yeah the song where they sing about marge while she's standing there it's like trying very hard to be funny and stupid and but it's not but it's not that weird and it's in mm. trying so it just feels like they're trying very very hard does mm. that make sense yeah i like th feel like i wrote down like a pretty similar thing is like mm. if it feels like a first draft. Oh, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you could, all the old ones, you can see, like, how laboured everything is because just these jokes are perfect. And, like, every. They're so line, smart. Yeah. They're smart. They're clever. Like, they're so, like, all the pop culture references are so expertly executed. Like, they've put so much thought into it. And, like, these, it just feels like a teenager had one go at writing a script and, like, they're not funny but they're trying really hard to be funny. And when people aren't funny and trying really hard to be funny, it's less funny than when funny people just miss it a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah 100%. Even like, okay, so we were talking about musical theatre references before. That was actually something I was also disappointed by. And look, look, I'll say this before I continue with my review, right? Yes, I, <laughs> yes, I begrudgingly got goosebumps when they were singing because I fucking hate myself and I love musicals. I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, fine, you got me, whatever. But like, oh my God, I completely lost my train of thought. What were they saying? I have ADHD. I have ADHD. <laughs> you can't begrudge me this. I have a disease. Uh, musical you goosebumps. Goosebumps. Musical. Oh, yes. We're talking about musical theatre references. Cut, cut, cut. We're talking about musical theatre references. Yeah, I feel like they were not interwoven at all. They were ham-fisted and just set out. Also, just saying Patti Lapone and Stephen Sondheim, that's not a reference. Mm. That's nothing. Like, like inter interweave it nicely. You know what I mean? It's like when in the monorail episode you had one of the characters from Star Trek, whose name I've now forgotten. Leonard Nimoy. Leonard Nimoy. Like, he's just there in the episode and he's funny and then he leaves, he disappears into the ether and that's really funny. Like if you're going to interweave like a musical theatre person like that, like put them in, interweave them in a comedic manner. Yeah. Because yeah. like, that was one of the standouts is that like 
it was doing musical theatre tropes, but, mm-hmm. like, not in a way that was reflective and, like, parodying and, like, bringing humour out of that. Like, the yep. whole Leonard Nimoy, the whole joke with that is that, you know, it's a play on the whole insufferable Star Trek fan. He is being an insufferable Star yeah. Trek. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does actor. anyone want to switch seats? Does yeah. <laughs> anyone want to switch seats? <laughs> uh, sorry, Rose, you were going to say. Uh, was I going to say something? Maybe. I don't know. I feel like I, I get the totally agree with like all the reference things like I always think of like Bart like reaching up for the cupcakes or whatever when he's been pitted against the hamster and it's such this like kind of like shot for shot like homage to a clockwork orange whereas yeah they're just saying the names of musical theatre yeah. things yeah and like ever since you said it on one of the other episodes I did it like has played so true over and over in my head is like the plot's advanced like someone describing a dream. Yeah. Mm. It's just so all over the place. Like yeah. there's, it just feels so messy. I, messy, oh. very messy. <laughs> well, this is what I mean. It started off in a certain direction and I was like, okay, let's continue. Let's continue down this direction. Let's, okay, Y2K <laughs> musical, let's fucking go. And I was like, oh no, this is about being backstage. Oh no, this is about like something else is about like the relationships they had or whatever. And it just, I, I don't know. It just felt like threads were lost. And there was even this bit at the start I don't know if you guys clock this, but um, when, what is it, Lisa and Bart were like, hey, maybe you should do the musical Homer or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then they start laughing evilly. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, what are they, like, what's their B plot? Are they going to do something? Is there a reason they want both of their parents to not be there? They're going to cause mischief at home? No, mm. nothing, nothing. That wasn't nothing. Was that a reference I missed? No, no. I like, I, I had that thought too, is like quite often with the like A and B plots and stuff like that, Everyone feels involved in a thought out way, even if it is quite minor. But like, it feels like with these new ones, they can really only get one thing and it's a mess. And then everyone is there. It's just this ancillary character that come in and make some not good jokes. (laughs) No, but it feels like they're like maintaining the line quota of like the main cast members. Like they just had to have Bart and Lisa have a line in this thing. To justify the pay grade of Yardley Smith. Yeah, Yeah, true, (laughs) true. I mean, same with Homer because like, yeah, when they were like cheekily getting involved in the musical that he didn't want to be a part of, that felt like a dropped element. Like mm-hmm. he didn't mm-hmm. really need to be involved, and and then at the end, yeah, Bart and Lisa just come back to say, "Hey, that was a bit of a cop out ending. Huh, this is lazy and terrible." Which <laughs> then the actual whole episode, yeah, <laughs> ended like that, where it was like two people who were burgeoning fucking stage managers came up. <laughs> like that's like I'm sure. That's not on purpose. It it was so lazy. (laughs) Well, people do care about me. I'm like, no, boo. But just in the most like insanely (laughs) ham-fisted way. (laughs) Good Lord. Yeah, I remember when I was a techie and I went up to the techies of your and go, you're my favourite. They they should have gone up to him and be like, hey, you my Simpson, like we need this theatre because we're rehearsing another show. Like, go away. Get out of here. Like, Like, come on, divert some expectations, girl. Like, isn't that what comedy is? Isn't that the whole thing? Just (laughs) goes out on the line, Marge, saying, I'm getting cheese fries. What's your address? Apparently your husband's (laughs) having a party at your house later. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So I think that segues perfectly into the heart how was the heart of this episode did we feel the emotional core did we feel the bumps no no <laughs> it, just, it just didn't feel real it just didn't feel real this ah, oh, i and i feel like again such a purist like i wonder if you know it's someone else who has watched all of the new seasons if they would have a different answer but mm. for me like i was like but this isn't what marge would do so this isn't what this character would do mm. ergo thereby the heart is not there and incorrect i just it feels very vapid it feels mm. really vapid and i think that's the difference between i don't know the newer episodes and the older episodes is just like oh you've just it's a character study a lot of the original seasons they, oh my gosh it's like these beautiful character journeys and now it's just like a side bit reference which isn't fun without like the meats the bones no. Yeah, I think it's like it feels now like they're making a show to make money because it's part of the big money machine, mm-hmm. whereas they used to be making a show because they wanted to make a good show. Yeah. And like, yeah, it's it's so devoid of heart because it just doesn't feel like the show anymore. Mm. It's a different show. Yeah. Mm. like I will say there is something to the idea that like – Marge was left out all out of all these things and like sure, yeah. history's mm. repeating, but 
I feel like in the way that they did it, where they were like, well, Marge, you blew up at Sarah and exposed her that she's a liar. So, you know what? It's actually your fault. Like, I felt that was a bit fucked. Like, totally, totally. Mm. I also thought, like, they were like, how dare you tell us that she's a liar? That was yeah. so bizarre. I was like, what yeah. do you mean? What do you mean? Like, I think I got that reference. That was a wicked one, That right? was wicked. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true. Of <laughs> course, mm. yeah. Marge turns into a witch and she turns green. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like the thing. <laughs> Subtle. I, I did kind of appreciate that, like, the blow in, like, when Barney was like, yeah, how dare she, like, say that you're a liar or whatever. And then when she was talking to Marge at the end, like, hadn't really learnt a lesson. No. Which, like, mm. that feels like The Simpsons, mm-hmm. is to just, mm-hmm. like, go through all this stuff and then be like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other thing that, like, felt like the show was in that weird moment where, like, Bart and Lisa, like, egged him on to be in it where he turned around and be like, you've made an enemy for life. Like, that oh, actually yeah. kind of felt like Homer. Yeah, yeah. that was funny. <laughs> I didn't even get it. I was like, no, it's funny though. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because it feels like him. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's agree. convenient. That's the next question uh, we asked. Did it feel like The Simpsons? Are the characters, like, behaving like themselves? Like, what you'd recognise is... I think mostly I feel like the show is letting them down, but, like... Mm. The characters, like, themselves, Mm -hmm. their portrayal, I think is mostly okay-ish. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Homer, like, I, you know, I've heard pray tell of people speak of the mythical new seasons that I'll never watch. (laughs) And um, they would talk about Homer, like, he's just, like, yeah, devoid of emotion and he's just doing all these random crazy things and he's this unfeeling monster. This unfeeling monster, yeah. But I was pleasantly surprised by the fact that he seemed quite sweet and wholesome and, like, that he, like, loved his wife. Like, I was like, oh, that's nice. I didn't expect that. So that was kind of sweet. Yeah, it feels like the writers have sort of listened to the whole jerk ass sure. homer criticism. And sure. uh, yeah, like in the latest few seasons, yeah, they've toned that element of him down. So yeah, in the 30s, you don't see that much. Oh God, I can't believe I talk about the Simpsons in their 30s. That's- <laughs> 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 they're, in their, they're in their mid 30s too. Like. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I, I think like, I have definitely seen that they've like dialed back the jerk ass homer thing. But also, I don't feel like they've quite nailed it down again. Mm -hmm. Because, like, he's very sweet, but he's an idiot. But, like, one thing that he's always missing these days is, like, he would show flashes of, like, intelligence or, like insanely specific knowledge about something like for some reason he knows who all the Supreme Court justices are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. square the root of an isosceles <laughs> triangle is equal parts. <laughs> yeah. But like that's missing. Like he still yeah. seems like just a dullard. Yeah. I think. Mm. Like, no, absolutely. Yeah, especially this one. This was kind of the zombie home, very much going through the motions yeah. and only doing what the mm. plot zombie demanded on him. Simpsons. It, it was it was so sorry, sorry, please. Oh, you know, you no, no, no. Mm. I was gonna say it was <laughs> <laughs> It was really strange. It was strange. Because a part of me was like, Oh my god, I have not seen a new Simpsons episode in ages and I'm like, these are the characters I love. They look they look the same. Barney's voice sounds the same when he sings. I'm like, that's really nice. Mm. So I was like, Oh my god, amazing, it's the same. But then they do things that were really weird. Yeah. And it was like, oh, Zombie Simpsons, like, uh, what's, what's <laughs> going on? Is this the death or the end for <laughs> Zombie <laughs> Simpsons? <laughs> <laughs> so I think the answer to this one's obvious. Yes or no, would you watch this episode again? No. No. All right. No. But, like, yeah. as far, just to, like, <laughs> just say more than no, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> if it was, like, if I was just, like, at someone's house or something like that and it was playing in the background, it wouldn't enrage me (laughs) (laughs) whereas some of the other new ones i've had to i'd be like oh god it wasn't offensive and i think Mm. the fact that it was i think musical gags are like can be when done well like really funny and i feel like just by road of the fact that they were singing and i find songs to be entertaining Mm. i thought it definitely was watchable more watchable than i expected but i wouldn't go back yeah (laughs) it made the songs made it so much easier to sit through surprising because yeah sometimes the songs can be the most cringiest yes. elements of the new ones i point back to that hamilton <laughs> yeah, yeah. where yeah i kind of want to watch mean... it though you've been intrig- you've definitely <laughs> piqued my interest i mean anything related to lin-manuel miranda is annoying is it- <laughs> <laughs> have you seen that video of him um like rapping on the subway on Instagram. No, like, and it's, I'm in sure. In New York or the sandwich in, restaurant? In, no, in, in New York. In New York. <laughs> you know what's with- crazy is that yeah. he's done the Melbourne Comedy Festival. Has he really? Yeah. What did he do? He used to be in this thing called Freestyle Love Supreme. Oh, my God. Where it was just like a bunch of people who would just like do like improvised freestyle raps and stuff oh. like that. 
So like wow. Lin Manuel Miranda's <gasps> done the gala. Did he win? Did they win any awards? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, our mate DJ Y showed me. I had no idea because yeah. I haven't seen mm. the show. But he was in The Sopranos as well. <laughs> he had a, was he really? Yeah, <laughs> he had a, like a two line role where he's like a bellhop, and they're asking him a question. He's like, I don't know. And then he it. bites his lip. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know how to say no. <laughs> I just don't think he's that good a singer. I think he's a good writer, though. That's my take. Oh, on oh he, like, he needs to absolutely not start. <laughs> no. No, like, I tell anyone who's curious don't watch Hamilton on Disney Plus. It's not the best way to see it. Totally. See it in any, like, see an amateur theatre production before yeah. you see that version. Well, I thought the Australian one was really good because Lynn wasn't the lead. Yeah. yeah. So it actually made, like, a lot of the songs, I was like, oh, that's great. I hated that song. Now I really like it. But I, I think, conversely, as well, the guy playing Aaron Burr was so. So good oh. that it made him look even yeah. worse than he already would. Have. Yeah, terrible, <laughs> terrible. The emperor has no tone, people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I quite like. I went and saw the movie of In the Heights. Mm. Oh yeah, I really liked it because he wasn't in it. <laughs> like yeah. he just very briefly popped up as this like shaved eye salesman <laughs> for like. 15 seconds in a song like twice. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Take a back seat. Yeah. Yeah, you'll make enough money from the writing credits, Len. We don't need to say any more of you. Oh, yeah. wild. So, yeah, we like to um, look at these episodes and think about what we'd like to change about them. So, yeah, starting with you, Jacinda, what would you, uh, how would you change this episode to improve it? Oh, I would, I would make it a whole like parody musical, original musical episode. That's what I would do. Yep. And I would draw out the Y2K 90s reference thing. And yeah, I don't know, have like characters sing about like specific things in that period. Like I'm trying to think of something, but maybe like, I don't know. They did like a dial dial up like computer reference. Yeah. 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 Oh, but that wasn't even part of the show, was it? That was just no. Marge using her her mother's old computer. Yep. Yeah. yeah. For yeah. like a second. And yeah. it wasn't that good. But <laughs> <laughs> But no, you could totally incorporate that sound into the soundtrack some way. Exactly. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Or like have I don't know, like make fun of how campy and stupid musicals are. Like again, I keep going back to a streetcar named Marge because I kept comparing the pair. Mm. And like when they sing you know you have an opening group number that introduces the town and they sing about new orleans yeah, and yeah. how it's awful and it's <laughs> Pukish, Frankish, really funny. Fell. Yeah. <laughs> funny yeah. it's funny and them like getting it wrong with like that you can always depend on <laughs> the the kind of stranger. i am just a simple paper boy <laughs> i think about that song all the time. Three yeah. seconds of like an 11 o'clock number by Apu. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, and it's, I still haven't seen a streetcar named Desire, but yeah, after... Don't need to. Actually, you already saw it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but hearing the actual plot of it and then, yeah, get, going back with that context, oh my God. Like it's so funny. Exactly. So funny. Yeah. So I think, I don't know, because it's like if you build up audience expectations at the start, like yeah. fulfill them, I would also have like a relevant B plot. I would also mm. make Marge's voice suit her. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Rose? What would you like to change? I, I kind of agree with that. I think, like, because I think they're really good when they're parodying something. Mm -hmm. So, like, parody, like, the plot line of, like, Wicked or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, yeah. like, a big, ubiquitous musical. You can find ways to, like, make someone the, like, Glinda character and someone the, whatever the other one's called. Alpha Bar. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Oh, I've only ever just listened to that one song over and over again. Defying Gravity. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> we we realised one night that one of the best bits that you can do is to be like girl really trying hard at musical theatre but getting it wrong. <laughs> so just like singing, like really going for it with that song but just being really off tone. Oh, well, that's pretty much everyone that tries to that's sing true, yeah. the bit where <laughs> like, she belts at the end. Yeah. Every time I've heard my friends sing it at parties or karaoke, bro, we yeah. butcher it, we kill it, we kill no it one, dead. No one is Adele Dazeem. <laughs> Adele um. Dazeem! <laughs> But, like, yeah, have that. I reckon, like, mm. lean into the 90s thing more again. So, like, some of the songs can talk about specifically 90s things. So you can have more, like, 90s kind of imagery and all that. Like, also, it make... could have, sorry, sorry to interrupt. God, I'm so rude. It would have been a really good opportunity to herald back to the days of 90s Simpsons. Yeah. Like, sure. to yeah. actually do some of those, like, niche references that they used to do yeah. in the OG Simpsons anyway. Like... Call you know back I mean? to like 
Simpsons shit from then. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you need an apologize. I, I think podcasting is just interrupting. <laughs> um, <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> interrupting with microphones. Yeah, it's just structured. It's why I don't listen to audio books. There's not enough interruptions. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> one's laughing. <laughs> Where's <laughs> the laughter? <laughs> nothing here to break up Stephen Fry. <laughs> <laughs> But I reckon, like, then in, like, the B-plot, right, like, get, like, Bart and Lisa to go and, like, mm. try and, like, reintroduce a craze from the 90s or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like, they get into fucking Tarzos or some bullshit. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. just, like, really, like, make it about a thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, it was brought up before, but yeah, the whole lack of the musical in this, like I know they're doing the whole play within a play bullshit, but Mm. like, yeah, I did want to hear more songs from the Y2K musical and Mm -hmm. and I wish there was more of like, okay, I wish Marge singing wasn't a part of it. Like, I know they bring the context with the weird fucking vocal uh, dream bubble colour thing. In my head. Yeah. Mm. But like, I wish it was more that... Marge had a song in her heart and didn't have the opportunity to sing it and every time she'd go for it, she'd get cut off and sort of shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's right. tropey in itself, but yeah, that that's my idea. Yeah. yeah. I like that idea. Um, all right. Well, yeah, we're here. Are there any other parts from the episode want to mention before we move on? I feel like I had some stuff written down. So much of the dialogue yeah, is really writing notes, childish. Yeah, writing notes would have been a good idea, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, like, like, most of my notes for the next episode are just like, it's so funny. So, it's been so good. Funny. Oh, this is really so good. I love it's this just part. A page of writing. Oh, great. So good. Yeah. I, I mean, felt really off when Homer took a selfie. I'm like, no, Homer doesn't have a smartphone. <laughs> no. <laughs> Flip float, phone at best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I, the, the lack of Atmos still. Yeah, really for a musical yeah. episode, the lack of interstitial music was weird still. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mind uh, the whole thing where Kirk finds his guitar pick and like strums a guitar. Oh, it still works. Um, the, the ensuing but song was bad, but still. Do you know what he should have played? Can I <laughs> borrow a feeling? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, cleanse ourselves with the classic review. But first, we must rank this episode. Mm. So on the Simpsons Index, we rank using a six-point scale, which starts down the bottom at failure. But maybe if the episode is just meh, you give it participant. But for positive rankings, you got OK Bronze, Good Silver, Excellent Gold. But for the best of the very best, you give Cubic Zirconia. I'm going to go first. Let me show you how it's done. Uh, I was close to a bronze because I agree it's not offensive and it's not like a bad watch, but like, yeah, the more we dissect it, the more I'm down it. So I think I'm going to land at a participant because, yeah, it's not offensive. It's just meh. What do you reckon, Jacinda? Okay, so is that is that the absolute middle of the ranking system? Is participant the center? Oh, very sort of lopsided. That has more second good from than bottom. Good. Yeah, Se- second second from bottom. Um, look, I'm gonna be unoriginal and completely agree because I I didn't want to put it at the bottom because it's not, but I don't want to put it any higher than that because it isn't. Just <laughs> just like I was pleasantly surprised, and that's really nice. But there's so much better TV out there that is really well written and good and consistent. So you can't, you can't, I think for me, Mm. give it a good ranking. Yeah. And Rosie finished off. I think, I feel like remembering other ones that I've given Mm. that ranking to mean that I should give it a bronze ranking. But I also know how many fucking episodes I haven't seen Yeah, that I'm sure like from like, I don't know, like season 16 or 17 or something like that, that are like probably more palatable than this. That would fall there. So, fuck it, I'm going to participate yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah, like around season 13, 14, that's where we like saw the most bronze rankings because mm-hmm. they're like, we say also sort of the bare minimum for bronze is like you've got to at least want to watch it again at least once more. Like, yes. And mm. we were pretty unanimous that we didn't. So, yes. yeah. yeah. Yep. All right, unanimous participant. <laughs> All right, now we're going to move on to the classic era. Uh, we'll take a short break. We'll be back. And we are back, and uh, we're about to review an episode from the classic era. This was Season 8, Episode 13, Simpson Califragilistic Expiala Annoyed Gruntious. <laughs> <laughs> or Simpson Califragilistic Expiala Dolcious. First re- released in February 1997, it was directed by Chuck Sheets, he sure does, written by <laughs> Al Jean. <laughs> Sick name, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, written by Al Jean and Mike Reese. In this episode, it's the Sherry Bobbins one. I don't need to do the plot uh, thing. You, you know it. Uh, <laughs> hey, what do we think? 
It's so good. It's, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's so funny. Such a good parody episode. Oh my god. The whole thesis of Cher is of Mary Poppins is that she's like this. She improves everyone's lives in all these amazing ways. And Sherry Poppins is like, let's cut corners because mm. that's that's what it is to be American. And it's yeah, funny. <laughs> yeah. No, that's it. What we we're talking about before the whole parody element of it. You know, mm. they didn't just have a Mary Poppins like character character in it she yep. was subverting the expectations yes. and yeah. getting frustrated <laughs> i've been singing you bloody songs all day i'm not a jukebox <laughs> yeah. oh, all right then. yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's very good the stark difference of the two musicals is just yeah, well, outrageous. And this was one, an episode they were nervous to do because, mm. like I said, Al Jean Mike Reese wrote this one and Mike Reese was actually not on board originally because he mm. thought the plot that uh, Al Jean had written out was too far-fetched for The Simpsons. It was yeah. too fantastical. Yeah, he um, said he didn't want much magic in it, right? Yeah, uh, <laughs> how far we've come. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think it all works here. Like, yeah. Yeah. There are some elements that I'm still mixed on, like her getting sucked into the jet engine. Yes, honestly. yes. God, <laughs> isn't that... It's so wasn't, funny. It's, but it's still. so funny. It's so funny, but it definitely was a... I remember watching that as a kid and being like, whoa, 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 whoa. I've never seen something like this in this show before. <laughs> that was definitely a bit of a moment. Yeah. And I think, yeah, for sure, like... This is kind of about the family, but it isn't about the family. It's like, this is about Mary Poppins parody. Like, yeah. let's let's go feed the Simpsons. Yeah. But uh, there is totally like that. What if Mary Poppins was stuck with this family mm-hmm. element to it as well? When, yeah, at this time where the Simpsons are holding up a mirror to themselves. I mean, mm. same season with Itchy and Scratchy and Poochie, which mm. is, yeah, sort of all about that. That's a lot of like the season eight stuff. Like That's like Frank Grimes. It's like, yeah. what if a real Absolutely. person was dropped into the Simpsons yes. universe? Yes. Right? Like, which I actually love that episode. Oh, People so hate good. it. I think yeah. it's great. People hate the Frank Grimes episode? They hate it. Because it's too, too meta, too meta. I thought that was widely regarded as one of the best. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we gave it, yeah, unanimous perfect score. Mm. Um, but yeah, we have heard that criticism and like people have said, yeah, there's jerk ass armor, but like he's so like golden retriever throughout Not that ex- whole thing. Yeah, like, beautifully yeah. Put. I think he just he's a blissful idiot. He doesn't yeah, realize. exactly. You've never been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's sweet. He's sweet. <laughs> yeah. No, I fucking love that episode. No, oh, mm. totally. All right. Uh, well, let's hook into this one. Uh, Jacinta, what's a moment from this episode that stands out to you for better or worse? Um. Barney's song, Barney's yeah. song, where, <laughs> yep, he's outside of the pub and he's just singing about <laughs> wanting to drink a beer and that's it. And it's so beautiful. A snifter of wine. <laughs> <And> <laughs> I found two bucks. Come in, my friend. So funny. Fuck, a two and bucks then, schooner. Yeah. yeah my God. Oh, back in the day, back in the 90s, things were different. <laughs> I never quite got to that. I think... There was a time just after I turned 18, so it would have been 2007, that if you had your membership card at the Ingerdeen Bolo, you could get 230 schooners. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> well, I remember like Bar Century, they had $3 drinks. That's true, yeah. yeah Actually, I took advantage day. of that quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. It was 18 getting fucked. Yeah, good yeah. times, good times. Did you all ever have a like a bar that did uh, uh, the one, uh, it used to be called Taylor's, it was like near Favreau Street. Um, they did toss the boss every Thursday where you could uh, flip a coin and if you had to pay for your round of drinks or not. Oh, oh I feel like God. I heard of that, but I never experienced it. Yeah, it was a very dangerous thing to have when I was at uni. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's so yeah. good. Did you ever get free like a free round? Oh yeah, like quite a bit. Like it, it was an insane promotion on their on their <laughs> behalf. Like yeah, yeah. I always remember like the Cronulla RSL had like it was probably like a two to three hour happy hour on Fridays where it was like two fifty schooners and then just suddenly it would be cancelled. But then everyone would stop going there. So they'd put it back on again and it just kept like kind of going off and on and off and on. <laughs> because like when it was on, it was chaos. Yeah. <laughs> like, this isn't sustainable. Like everyone here is so drunk. But oh, very, very funny to watch them like grapple with their like business choice. 
Yeah, but that song as well, yeah, this is the one that uh, she's singing to them to go to sleep. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and Funny extra level there. The ending line of Can I Be a Booze Hound Not Till You're 15 <laughs> just slayed me. Well, uh, that, that really got me today because like, I wrote that down. It's like, that, like, that's me. That's my life. <laughs> that's like when I started drinking yeah, a me lot. Too, and me like, too, me too. Yeah. pretty much never stopped. Yep. <laughs> Like, it's been nearly 20 years. <laughs> oh, Simpsons that- predicted it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whoa, how'd they do it? <laughs> I also like that, like, it's so stark, like, how much people don't feel like The Simpsons when you watch, like, an old episode, like, after the later one, where, like, that's so mo to be, like, so incredibly aggressive <laughs> yeah. to people that are very dear to him, but then to just flip on a dime. Yeah. On a dime, He's... literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two bucks is all day, yeah, baby. Yeah, <laughs> but then when you finish your drink, <laughs> <laughs> back down the uh, business end of a 12 gauge. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Sawn off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rose, what's a moment from this episode that stands out to you for better or worse? I really like. Because it's the show seems so much dumber now. Mm. And I like it when it's smart, where like he gives her the like hypothetical of like you catch me reading the play, dude, and <laughs> just like the writing of it is like I make you read like every article, including Norman Whaler's latest <laughs> claptrap about his waning libido. <laughs> like she's so cultured, she's aware that Norman Mail is writing a play, dude. Like yeah. also, that was a reference that I did not get at all when I was a kid. I was like, what? And oh, then yeah, I watched what? it today, and I was like, oh my god, yeah, it's so funny, That's so funny, yeah. Because <laughs> that's like that would have been a lot of the fucking Playboy stuff, like just yeah. horrendous <laughs> articles that no one's reading. <laughs> no, actually, we reviewed a. Uh, I think we were mixed on it. It was actually you guys might know them, um, Claire Sullivan and Lauren Bock, uh, yeah, Melbourne yeah, yeah. comedians. They hosted a podcast called Elementary Springfield, and yeah, so naturally I had to show them some shit episodes because they reviewed good episodes on that one. <laughs> yeah. and, the fools. <laughs> yeah, and we reviewed one from the teens era where like Bart and Millhouse found a bunch of Playboys where Marge cut out all the nude sections so like they thought like the appeal of it was all these fucking articles and stuff like right. yeah and they end up like yeah listening to Dave Brubeck and wearing um, bathrobes and shit anyway <laughs> sorry I got sidetracked there <laughs> was it fu- was it good? Uh, mixed because uh, it was also Marge entered a baking contest and she was like cheating to win. I do. I've heard of this episode. Yeah. I've heard pray tell. I yeah. feel like the better version of that though is like the Krusty gets cancelled one. With <laughs> like I can't call you F, can't I? No. <laughs> <laughs> God, but what stands out to me from this episode? Mm. Um. The intro with Krusty is a bit weird. Like, you can tell. <laughs> I love it. It's such a fucking, like, obvious dig at SNL. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but mad, mad about Shu. <laughs> we talking about that before. So stupid. You're going to hate NYPD Shu. It's basically the same joke. <laughs> it's basically the same thing. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> don't use too much tongue is like a pretty good line though. Like, oh yeah. my God. <laughs> and also just, I don't know. I just think the beginning slapstick of Krusty, like avoiding the things being thrown at him and yeah. then just getting beat down <laughs> with all of them. And there's just a shot of the family just like softly eating their dinners. I don't know. Yeah. I think that's a really crazy opening. The KKK thing really <laughs> makes me laugh because um, someone started a gig years ago in Maitland and they called it the Kookaburra Comedy Club. Oh no. And was KKK or whatever. But you could tell they definitely didn't clock it. Like, oh my god. <laughs> like, oh, we'll call it the Kookaburra Comedy Club. And like, well, if that's called the K, we'll just we'll make it all with K. Like, that, <laughs> that looks nice. It's just like, oh God. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh, you should have changed the Kookaburra to a C. <laughs> <That would> be- <laughs> At least. See, see, that's your first joke. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. But, like, that is one thing that sort of stood out to me from this episode because, yeah, doing this show, like, I've gotten, like, sort of an instinct to look out for when episodes were clearly running short and what they sort of did Mm. to pad out for time. Mm. Like, yeah, big giveaway, obviously, is the extended intro. They did the full fucking sweep through Springfield in this one. And, yeah, this, like, was scratchy. Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah, the the famous Quentin Tarantino one where... Mm. Well, I I read about that and like apparently they asked him to do his voice, but he said no because it was insulting and like 
Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> they're, make, they're making fun of you. <laughs> Deservedly so, I think. But no, it was a good loving parody as well. Like they did the full, yeah, pan away shot as well. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Same as Reservoir Dogs and yeah, paid for fucking stuck in the middle with you as well. And, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, it's interesting. And who amongst us hasn't wished that they could cut his head off when he started talking? <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, violence is everywhere, man. See your breakfast cereals. <laughs> but, but yeah, later on, he was uh, uh, on whatever red carpet and he was wearing wearing a shirt with Simpsonsized him with that entire quote on him. Like, oh, right. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so did yeah. he grow to love it? Uh, apparently so. Okay. Who would have thought that Quentin Tarantino might have a sense of humor about himself? <laughs> 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 yeah. So wackiness. How was the wacky elements in this episode? Oh. It's probably not overly wacky, but it's like suitably wacky. Yeah. Suitably wacky, yeah. Yeah. Like her flying in and like <laughs> winging around the fucking <laughs> uh, like... Power line. Yeah. <laughs> the one that caught me, like, that I don't know that I'd ever clocked it before was he, her grinding her shoes on top of the car. Yeah, <laughs> I like oh, that. See, that's a that nice is... touch. Like, those are the things where you're like, they've really laboured over every bit of this. Like, yeah. Yeah. What would it be like to actually fly through the air <laughs> in a cartoon? Oh, but yeah, fun. the bottom of her shoes are somehow causing the metal to rub and cause sparks. <laughs> like it's such a good detail. Yeah, boy for sale is <laughs> I think funny, and yeah. also all the all the little peppered English references. Like yeah, what is it? It's yeah. like Lisa's serving them dinner, and she's like, kippers. "More kippers, mum." Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I think like I I quite like when they do the like how wrong things go quickly. Yeah. Like there's that episode where like Marge is like getting them all to clean the house and they like, it's like Homer down in the basement, like hallucinating with like Mr. Clean and all yeah. that. And like Bart rubbing the American Gothic off yeah. and all that <laughs> or whatever it is. And then like, there's just like that one like frame where like, it's sparkling and then the door shuts and then it swings back open and it's immediately like filthy again. Yeah. And that, it's kind of like what happens when she leaves is mm. like suddenly like pulling her hair out. Maggie's got the fire extinguisher. Like, <laughs> She's the one putting out a fire. Yeah. Yeah. I like I, that super escalation quickly thing, I think, is a very fun, wacky side of everything. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, they certainly get en enough wacky moments in that montage of Marge losing her hair. Fuck, I forgot to write down what song that was, dude. Hair? That? It's from Give the musical me your hair. hair. With hair. Oh, long, beautiful hair. It's yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 one of my mum's favourites. Right? <laughs> <laughs> my, mine too. Yeah. Mine too. <laughs> Seventies like, was crazy. Yeah, they're probably from the same era. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good musical. No, I've never but seen the songs it. Are like, popular. Oh, it's bad. Oh, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. I think it's bad. like I feel like I've seen the intro to it when mum was watching it once, and then I like wanted to go and like kick a footy in the backyard yeah. or something. <laughs> that's fair. I think that's fair. I feel like that was a better thing to do. Fair. Yeah, <laughs> fair. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Someone write this down. <laughs> whoa, we're on fire. <laughs> that's the musical where everyone gets naked at the end, right? Yeah, I yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just about the kind of like 60s love in, right? Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hippies are crazy. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Which, you know, fair point. <laughs> kind of, kind of. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, the, the Sherry Bobbins obviously is going to be the big note of wacky throughout this whole thing. I mean, yeah. One of her big entrance moments is sliding upwards up the banister and waxing it on the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I butt. think that's like a thing that where they like feel like the show is like jokes like that in the new ones seem like Family Guy cutaway gags. Yes. Mm. Whereas this all seems well put together and like, ooh, like, <laughs> it's not disjointed, like, mm. if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the, more of an organic feel and, like, yeah, the the jokes are coming about with the situation. Mm. I did feel like, though, their walk through Springfield and, like, all the people that knew her, that was, like, a little bit cutaway-ish, but, sure. again, I didn't super hate any of the material, like, especially, yeah, stumbling upon Willie. Um, doing... <laughs> That's not what you said when you saw him. <laughs> 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 you got your vision back. Uh, <laughs> Suddenly the ugliest man in Glasgow wasn't good enough for you. Because <laughs> it's, uh, it's so funny to put on this like really like saintly seeming presence that she would just be really shallow. <laughs> Engage to be wed, but they'd be like, oh God, oh no. <laughs> it's so funny. I also thought when I saw Willie, I'm like, oh, he's going to join the plot and be a character. And it was like, nah. <laughs> 
interesting like musical choice and that he did the whole flash dance thing as well like as, <laughs> yeah he's doing the whole uh street performer thing of having the the the, the accordion One the drum band. and everything mm. also uh, thought to include a bucket of water on it so he could do the flash <laughs> I dance always love that detail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. i did not notice that at all until you said it just then that's yeah. crazy the yeah. bucket yeah. of water on top of the thing that's really funny yeah <laughs> oh he's a maniac <laughs> <laughs> oh he's a maniac god damn i'm dumb <laughs> this, this is the thing <laughs> <laughs> this is the problem with when you watch something from when you're very little. I feel like it's actually sometimes you get references, but sometimes you remember them in your little kid brain. Mm. So like you'll never be able to get out of your little kid brain and understand it from an adult perspective. That's what I think. Just with sometimes with The Simpsons. I don't know. Maybe that's just me because I'm. There have uh, definitely been ones that like I haven't like I've kind of appreciated the joke maybe more with adult brain but like i haven't like fully got it until someone's pointed it out because yep. it's a reference yep. to something i don't know yeah or didn't or didn't know at that time or whatever yeah you know what i mean or is it still a lot of the sex stuff i'm like even now i'm like whoa <laughs> 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 what <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember watching uh, Flashdance for the first time and my girlfriend at the time was like, oh my God, I can't believe my dad used to let us watch this as kids. Oh, like, yeah. it's kind of a fucked movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How about the heart of this episode? How are the bumps, the emotionals and all that? Poor Marge is losing her hair, going bald from stress. This family is a mess. I kind of like the way that it like kind of all ties up, I like. It's nice. Because like, yeah, like... It is that kind of thing that is the case a lot of the times in the episode, which is like, we realise that we're fucked, but we're kind of in it together. Like, we like each other. Like, it works for us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is a bit of a cop-out ending, but at least they're not pointing it out. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I kind of like the cop-out endings, though. Like, I feel like they're done really on purpose in yeah. this era. Like, we didn't learn anything. Like, I mm. like those. Like, I can't remember which episode it was. Is it... It's Rosebud, isn't it? Where they get to the end and they're like, "Oh yeah," <laughs> it's like it's an ending. Like, yeah, is this a good ending or a bad ending? Yeah, it's, an, it's ending. an ending. That's that, enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I love it when they do that. They're just like, "Yeah, it's it's done." And then like included in that is her fucking being eviscerated by an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with the cliche of, "Oh, I don't think it's the last time we'll be seeing her yeah, son." Yeah, and yeah, all yeah. that. Yeah, I'm sure we will. It's very funny. I also thought, oh, the Bart and Lisa song just made, oh, when they start singing about all the qualities they want in a nanny, yeah. but not grandpa because he <laughs> sucks. <laughs> so cute. It's so sweet. It's so sweet. I don't know. For me, I'm just like, I loved Mary Poppins when I was a kid and I love that episode. Yeah. And it's very sweet in the movie and it's very sweet in this. And I'm like, mm, they're so sweet. Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, musical references. So that song was in Mary Poppins. Uh, were all of those? All of them. Yeah, all they're all. Okay. all of them. Uh, yeah, they're all parodies. All Apparently, there was parodies. another one. Um, well, Margarita Phil, I'm pretty sure wasn't in Mary Poppins. No, no, no. not that one. <laughs> so <I came> for <laughs> my <laughs> last shaker of salt. <laughs> that reminded oh, me. Is. <laughs> I don't know how familiar you are with Kyle Kinane, the comic, but he's got a really good bit about how like the song Margaritaville gets so much sadder when you realise that there are now, like, a chain of, like, restaurant bars called yeah. Margaritaville. <laughs> like, I couldn't stop thinking about that. Yeah, I went to one in my American travels. It An insufferable amount of Jimmy Buffett is playing the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> and they, like, I didn't know that that amount existed. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get enough. Uh, but ultimately, does it feel like an episode of The Simpsons? Are these the characters we know and love? Is this a show we know and love? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I reckon. Absolutely. Marge is unappreciated. Homer, Homer's a sophisticated gentleman, as it always <laughs> is. Yeah, Bart's <laughs> hucking cupcakes. It's, oh. all, it's all as it should be. I thought, like, a part that really feels like the show is, like, where Bart says that he'll take up smoking and then give that up. <laughs> <laughs> Homer really starts to congratulate him. Yeah. He's like... That's such a trope of like the early thing is like them taking advantage of him being very well meaning yeah. but an idiot. <laughs> I even like the extension to that where Lisa's like, he didn't, oh, didn't do anything. Do anything. <laughs> didn't he, Lisa? <laughs> didn't he? Wait, no, he didn't. <laughs> so, you think, yeah, that, that's, that, yeah, that really feels like it. One of the Bart lines that lives rent free in my head is mm. um, the cracked pepper bit. Little more, little more, <laughs> little more. Oh, yeah, Too much, yeah. take it back. Too much, take it back. Yeah. yeah. I think we were talking about that off air, but like the amount of times that I say in that tone is uh, 
Well, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure I've at some point said I'm practically perfect in every way. Yeah. <laughs> I always say indubitably. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I can't even remember what this was, but I wrote the quote down. Put me down for one of each. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was... Um, Grandpa, oh, that yeah, was Grandpa yeah. Simpson. That, that's why it feels like Grandpa. Of that him. <laughs> like, that's the same as that little from column A, a little from column B. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, Sherry Bobbin saying, I'll do everything from telling stories to a diaper change put me down for one <laughs> yeah. I think that's probably like the way they do little like again like sort of cutaway things is like thought bubbles are like a real big thing in the Simpsons and like the what's going on in Homer's head like of all the what's going on in Homer's head gags, I think that one's probably my yeah. favorite. Like, that one has stuck. That one has stuck. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Just the just the music and like the old Mickey Mouse <laughs> era style graphic. Yeah, like, I think it's like a direct Steamboat Willie reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're yeah. playing that same uh, rendition of Turkey and the Straw, Turkey and the Hay. I believe it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that rings a bell. Yeah, have either of you gone back and watched Steamboat Willie at all? <laughs> oh, Not recently, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Haven't been, haven't done my weekly haven't Steamboat the, Willie watch. Haven't watched it since the 40s. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, since art six. Um, I reckon I probably have, but I can't remember. It would have been a really long time ago. Yeah, well, when Disney Plus first came out, like... Um, I kind of just went on a binge of like watching anything that they put on there that had to start with a warning, you know. <laughs> That's <laughs> so right. funny. Is it on there? Yeah. Uh, oh wow. Because yeah, the like the first half is basically uh, Mickey just trying to get on this boat. Oh my god, the boat's getting away without me on it. And then the second half is just Mickey abusing animals to the this song and like playing the cow's teeth and then like <laughs> um <laughs> strangling a turkey and making that like, say it to the tune and then like he's pulling on a pig's nipples at one point to make mm-hmm. it like, and then he along. strikes the uh, animal's <laughs> red twice in succession, but it was two clearly different tones. <laughs> I also really got fired. That day. <laughs> yeah. Great cartoon, great company. Glad, so glad they own the Simpsons now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we've come full circle with cartoons, man, because I bet then they were crazy. And yeah. then and then we got, you know, a little more like kid appropriateness. And now, you know, we still have that, but they're also totally psycho again, which I think is good. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. More pig nipple gags, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I mean, like in that episode with all the old itchy and scratchy stuff, we're like, uh oh, yeah. an Irishman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look out, Edgy, he's Irish. <laughs> yeah. But yes or no, would you watch this episode again? Yes. yes. <laughs> I've Have watched it so many times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've watched it so many times. Before we did will. this, before this podcast was on the cards, I watched it like two weeks ago. Because I saw, I was saying this to Rosie before, I watched... um. Mary Poppins at the the musical at the Capitol Theatre. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then I came home and I was like, well, what am I going to watch? I'm going to put on my favourite episode. (laughs) It's so fun after watching all the songs. So good. Yeah, I would watch it again. And episodes that we want to watch again, we like to think about what playlist we'd put them in. So, you know, we're putting together a Simpsons playlist. What are some other episodes that, like, remind you of this one, share thematical elements and would pair nicely? Ooh, I think a streetcar named Marge, absolutely. Because yeah, I was thinking true. about it a lot. Obviously, I've mentioned it a lot. But when I think about like musical episodes that are like interesting and have some heart, that one. Yeah, yeah. what else? Yeah, all, like yeah, musicals. Yeah, like oh, the- uh, Fish Called Selma with like the Planet of the Apes. Oh, and all that. yeah. Oh, stop, stop the, the planet. planet of the Apes. I want to get off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect title for that as well. <laughs> it's so funny. The um, what is it? When Apu stays with the Simpsons. I've forgotten the name of that episode. So. It's Homer and Apu. Yeah. Homer and Apu. Oh, and how could I? It's so simple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anything with that. Basically, anything that's in the clip show one called like All Sing and All Dance and All. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Play, but not that episode. No, yeah, not yeah, that yeah. one. The just if you want to immediately suck. relive everything that you just watched. Yeah. <laughs> put it at the end of it. Um, but yeah, you were talking about the Homer's Thoughts episode. Put that one in, in there as well. Like there's one where he's, I've got to do some serious thinking and um, oh, it's the, um, the, like, the, the monkey- film festival one. Uh, where he's like trying to decide whether he's going to vote for Barney's film or Molman's film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but football well, in the groin did have football in the groin. I think we yeah, can all yeah, agree. Yeah, and yeah. he had the thought bubble, and it's the goat eating the can. 
Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. One word to walk. The other I one. It. Is it that one or is it another one where he's like, "My mind is going a mile a minute." There's like a monkey eating like something off the other one's back or something. Oh yeah, and then later on, it's the monkey trying to teach the other one calculus or oh, something. That is what yeah, I thought. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember the episode, but I can remember that yeah. happens a lot with me. Like I totally forgot that that thought gag was in this episode. Yeah. But I love that gag and I bring it up a lot. Mm. Very yeah. funny. I think like. Maybe like just a playlist of like transplants into their universe. So mm. like Frank Grimes. Sure. True. This is one like Oh, hello. Um oh yeah, we were talking about oh my god, it's the same one, the film critic episode. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, true. Jay Sherman, yeah. Jay Sherman. Yeah. <laughs> you know, wish I was an Oscar Mayer winner. <laughs> musical as well. Musical, wow, musical. A- musical. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hitting all the all the goals. Um uh, so Jacinda, is there anything you'd like to change about this episode? Oh, that's hard. That's like asking because because it's so embedded into your heart and yeah. like your memories. They're asking, would would you change your child who you love? And it's like, <laughs> I love them unconditionally. Um, would I would I change anything? No, 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 no. It's not very good for the podcast. I don't think I would. I don't think I would. I love it too dearly. Yeah. Kill your babies. What do you think? What would you change? <laughs> I was going to steal your answer, but how about yours? <laughs> I mean, like, sort of similar. Like, I'm trying to think, but like. Okay, I feel like I feel like could I phrase this question differently, even though it's your podcast? Sure. Can I take over? Can I take take, take the wheel for a sec? Okay. There's a man with a gun, and he's like, "You have to change something in this episode. What would it be?" Kill me now. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather die. Yeah. Draw twenty five. Someone doesn't yeah. value good art. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? Like it, it? Honestly, like it could just be like maybe some of the like, which are things that I like, like the like fucking Charles Bronson gag which like the Charles Bronson voice is always funny and they're like yeah. I wish I was dead or, yeah. this ain't over oh but, Bronson Missouri yeah yeah <laughs> no dice <laughs> Mark have some cookies <laughs> but like you could take that stuff out and put out the song like put the song that they did that they didn't include in it which is like I love to laugh, but it was I love to smoke, and it was Patty and Selma. Mm. Oh, that's great! Yeah, I, you know what? Here's something I would add. I would have loved to. I, I mean, I guess that is what they did with Barney's song, but I wanted it to be a little bit closer to Feed the Birds itself. But no, they did do Feed the Birds. Mm, <laughs> let me think. Let me think. Let, give me a second. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> uh, I was just quickly going through my notes, scouting for things to say in the "Do you have any other notes?" section. Mm-hmm. Mrs. Doubtfire gag doesn't really land oh, anymore. But you know what? Though? I mean, that kind of oh, does. I, you know what? I completely disagree with that. That's all right. Let's have some podcast contention because I laughed so hard when I read watch that this is a man in a wig <laughs> but it's, i think it's also I funny for her to be like, if you keep doing this and he's yeah. just like sorry <laughs> like is aware that he's doing it and then also just immediately does it again <laughs> yeah going from the penny feather to the uh happy twinkle or whatever the, the next nanny was called <laughs> periwinkle <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no there's not a lot like it is an unusual episode of the simpsons yes. like they yeah. are totally breaking format um yeah but mm. yeah, th- that's the problem when it lands. Is it's like it's hard to argue. Mm. Yeah, totally, totally. If it ain't broke, yeah. All right. Well, yeah. I think. Does anyone have any other notes about the episode they want to mention before we move on to the rankings? I feel like I got a lot of stuff. I, I, mm. But um, <laughs> I think the way that Homer tries to get Marge to fuck by saying he was just watching women's volleyball <laughs> is yeah. really funny. <laughs> but the also the, the the one he did before that as well, Marge. I've just, I had, just a had a couple of beers. 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 <laughs> <laughs> It's very good. Uh, imagine if losing your hair made it look like Swiss cheese. I thought that was funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, I always like when Lisa, because she can be so wholesome, but she can also be so shitty mm-hmm. because she's just like a kid that loves TV. And like when she's like, you know, Lisa, like there's a whole world out there. And she's like, shh. TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, me go, me go, me. <laughs> yeah. It's good when they still let them like be kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, 
I'm sorry. I just every time I watch the Simpsons, I just think of like growing up in my family. That was us. That was oh me. yeah, that was me for all sure. We, all we yeah. did was watch TV. We didn't do anything. Yeah, we were watching them on TV. Like, oh. <laughs> I was and, watching that, doing that. I remember like, when Bart's like, "But TV spent more time raising us than you did." And yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. "That's that's me, yeah. Mom. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. you." <laughs> Absolutely. No, even recently, um, yeah, my tiny bit of patch of grass that I've got in my backyard was overgrowing, <laughs> and I still downloaded and played a lawn mowing simulator on the uh, Xbox. <laughs> wow, <it's all laughs> Fe- feather touch or power drive. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think the only other note I had uh, was I would absolutely fuck someone with a beach umbrella in their hair. <laughs> <laughs> No, leave it in. <laughs> like, as if you wouldn't. <laughs> it's dirty. They yeah, can yeah. be a bit dirty. <laughs> but it, it feels fun. Ooh, shade. Uh, uh, got a couple more notes. <laughs> Homer saying to Marge, don't worry, I'll teach you how to comb it over and no one will notice, just like my hair. Oh, that's so oh. funny. So heartbreaking, the cry afterwards, though. The little, the little shot of Marge and Just bold. the picture of it. Yeah. <laughs> the little shot of Marge Oh, it's so funny. Oh. Anything with they fuck with Marge like that with like a lot of blue hair. <laughs> what a freak. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sherry Bobbins cutting off Homer is like, oh, just like Mary Pop. Nope. I'm an original <laughs> yeah. character, just like Ricky Rouse and Modeled Muck. Modeled Muck. I always really laughed at Modeled Muck in particular. <laughs> <laughs> just like the absolute laziest you could go yeah. with that. Like, <laughs> it's a time where clearly a first draft joke was the best one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're always fun with that. Like the, you mean shining? Mm-hmm. Shh, do you want to get sued? Do you yeah. want to get sued? <laughs> <laughs> Um and uh, Nelson bringing her posies is fucking cute. Yeah. Um and uh, Bart's compliments to oh with you every day is like Guy Fawkes Day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I'd ever picked up on that joke until this yeah, time. Me too. Me too. No, it, it's like yeah. I feel like as a kid, yeah, the the shit that goes over your head. It's like yeah, another Bart line that lives in my head is um I'm aware of the work of Pablo Neruda. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> why? Why are you aware of Guy Fawkes? <laughs> yeah. As well. <laughs> Why does and don't be Gus, the Suter lovable is. chimney sweep. <laughs> the day, uh, so why it's Christmas day. <laughs> that constantly plays in my head. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm loving this blood pudding. The secret ingredient is blood. And <laughs> <laughs> because it's true. Yeah. It's just a fucking blood sausage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I'll good. just have more brain and kidney <laughs> pie. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but speaking of food, and before we move on to the rankings, mm. we have to ask you, Jacinta, what is the most important question we ask on this podcast? Oh, yeah. Sorry to spring this on you at the last minute without any warning, but here's your warning. If... You were to have a sandwich <laughs> that was named after you. What would be on that sandwich? A sandwich that was named after me and what yeah. would be on it? I'm going into the Simpsons Index Deli. I'm ordering a Jacinda Gregory. What's on it? Oh, my God. As in actual sandwich ingredients? Yeah. What? 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 <laughs> what is your perfect sandwich? You just want me to describe a sandwich that is me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like like fully like food. Okay. Um. <laughs> fully like food, yeah. I, just, I wish I'd listened to it. What, what's your sandwich? No. No examples? Oh, I would have done it. But I, I I don't remember what it was. I feel like it included like KFC chicken and like yeah. gravy and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, uh, pretty mine, sure it was that. Mine would yeah. be more pickle than bread. I really like pickles. Um, what if you could make like a like a kind of like pickle bread? Like I like oh. how you get like olive bread. Like yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Like an embedded pickle bread. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna des- okay. I'm gonna describe this sandwich. Like they describe the the sandwich in The Simpsons. It sounds absolutely disgusting. Yeah, yeah, with like yeah. covered in fresh creamery butter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good okay. morning okay. burger. Yep. Yeah. The good yeah. morning burger. Okay. Okay. This is the Jacinta Gregory burger. Okay. Yep. Jacinta Gregory sandwich. Okay. <laughs> first, we start with a layer of pickled bread, pickle embedded bread. <laughs> then we dipped have in pickle juice. Dipped in pickle juice. <laughs> then we have a layer of actual pickles. Yep. And then really good, probably like fake chicken would be like, like what do you call fake chicken? Frickin' let's say, let's say it's, it's called that. They just call it chicken, right? But it doesn't have the E. It's got the little oh, apostrophe. Oh, yeah, yeah, stupid. Yeah, yeah. God, yeah, all the fake meat, meat names are fucking dumb. But anyway, they're, so like, they're dumb, they're stupid. But I mean, the moment that KFC brings out that and yeah. it tastes like KFC, 
There's no excuse. Like you can't. No, that's the end. I, that's it. That. I'm like, just. I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for a really delicious fucking fried chicken alternative. Yeah. So in my perfect universe, that exists, and that's on <laughs> it. And then there's like a huge block of cheese that's just been melted. Mm. You know what? This is my burger, so it's going to be disgusting. So it's going to be blue cheese, and it's not going to make any sense. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> the way I eat is bizarre and horrible. <laughs> you don't hey, know me, me that well. Me too. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then. It's dipped in rich creamery butter. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, and uh, that's, and this that's is it. making me just really want to go home and order so much fucking garbage <laughs> food. <laughs> well, no, I mean you're talking about like yeah, Beyond Chicken. I don't. Have you uh, either of you been to Soul Burger at Newtown? Mm-hmm. No, actually, yeah. Oh, They're, it's so good. They, they've got like this Nashville chicken fillet, which is yeah. I, I don't know how they've done it. It like yeah. it feels like chicken grain, like when you bite into yeah. it. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. Yeah, the burger I always get is the chicken one that had. Yeah, it's like all pickles and jalapenos and shit, and it's like fried Kentucky, like you know, mm. southern chicken vibes, yeah. and it's like very good. The, the only thing is they're just so expensive. Mm. But if they, oh man, if they weren't, I'd eat that shit every day. It's so so delicious. I will never stop being bitter about the fact that McDonald's got rid of its only vegetarian burger. I will never get over it. They had a vegetarian burger. Do they really not have one. No, 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 no. They got nothing. They got nothing yeah, for no crazy. one. Fuck you. They got nothing. They got nothing. Hungry Jacks has one though. It's very good. I've heard this. Very good. Yeah, H- Hastings was writing the. They say Beyond the burgers book. are better at Hungry Jacks. <laughs> <laughs> Even the Beyond well, burgers. Well, they are. From my personal perspective, my bias point of view. Yeah. Yeah. Who would have thought Hungry Jacks being the most based out of all? Of them? I know. Yeah. Well, Hungry Jacks the most woke. What the yeah. hell's going on? Yeah, what yeah, the yeah. hell's happening? <laughs> the true kings of burger. Uh, anyway, it's time we rank this thing. <laughs> <laughs> the sandwich? I give it a 10 it, out of 10. Yeah, it's, it'll be good, I promise. Oh, that'll be the sandwich I you, try and convince people at, to try. You lost me at blue cheese. Really? You don't yeah. like blue I don't cheese? Think I, could do I really that. like blue cheese sauce on in um Subway. Subway, they have blue cheese sauce. It's really good. Oh, I can't do Subway anymore. Yeah, why? I've worked for like nearly three years at this job where basically the only food options were a McDonald's or a Subway. Oh. And I worked like four days a week and I basically just alternated between McDonald's and Subway. And I have never once set foot in a Subway since I quit that job. Very fair. It just like, oh, like that Pete Holmes bit just constantly rings in my head about like everything there tastes the same and it all tastes the way the restaurant smells. (laughs) (laughs) Like it's so spot on. It so does. Mm. Yeah, I remember when I was working at Marrickville Metro, the Telstra store. <laughs> I did not have a long career there. I'll tell you that one for free. I'm so bad at sales. People would be like, I don't want this. And I'd be like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, fair That's enough. Yeah. What do you mean? Life's hard. Yeah. I'm not going to push this fucking iPhone case onto yeah. you. As long as you like me. Yeah. <laughs> all, I, all I desperately need is your approval. Yeah. Um, but yeah, before the Soul Origin, that used to be a subway, didn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah, the only lunch I had was also McDonald's every day. And you know when you eat a certain kind of food so many times that it just becomes horrific? That yeah. Way. I don't know, though. Like, the, I always thought that like if I was to do mm. the movie Super Size Me, it would be called <laughs> Business as Usual. <laughs> <laughs> Just another month. <laughs> a busy month. <laughs> Rosie lives her life, but for some reason now we're filming it for a month. <laughs> right. That's so true. I remember watching that and being, he's like, oh my God, this is terrible. I'm like, get over it. You know, get like, over yourself. He's on day three and he like vomits out the side of his car. Oh my I'm like, God. what a <laughs> fucking wimp. Just a double quarter pounder. Hard <laughs> up prick. Okay, do a pounder and then talk to me. <laughs> oh God. I'll do it and run a marathon. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you wimp. Just, yeah, yeah. Just, 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 just eat little McDonald's little every day and then, and then do it. <laughs> you guys see the article of the guy who chain smoked his way through a marathon recently? Yes. Oh, what a king. What a king. Oh, my hero. King. Absolute oh, king. Shit. 100%. That's not like, I've been trying to write a bit about this. Maybe this is an impetus to do it, but like, I had like a horrible thing happened for like how my brain works where like years ago I was sick and then like pre-COVID so you could still go out when you were sick mm. yeah. I just had like a cold or something that was good times <laughs> yeah 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 I would have just had like a cold or something and then like I just had like the night out that I would normally have in my like mid-20s where I just like drank and smoked really heavily and then I woke up the next day and I felt fine so now like I treat illness yep. like a kind of like maverick army general of like 
Let's see if we can't smoke this bad boy out of there. <laughs> I, okay, can I, similar, can I, okay, I don't know, I didn't ask what we can and can't talk about on the pod as well. Can we talk, I mean, I mean, I mean, you talked about weed, okay, talk about drugs, okay. So, like, so, <laughs> there was, there was one time in my memory, right, mm. where I had really bad allergies or, I was just sneezing all day and I just felt a bit weird and sick. Mm. And I went out that night, this is pre-COVID days, mm-hmm. and I took a bunch of caps and I felt better and it literally Literally never returned. I just felt better the next day and felt fine. It never came back. Holy shit. And so now I'm like, that's the cure. <laughs> that's the cure. Fingers. That's actually the cure. And I will say, I will say for allergies, it is sensationally effective. Yeah, because you just feel euphoria. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh, I can't notice any of this. Because your sinus is like on. crazy. Because your sinus is like crazy. And it doesn't even come back. But for a cold, I don't know. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Hit and miss, hit and miss. This might be the first episode of this podcast where we'll get like one of those little, uh, this is not medical advice the flags <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, check with your local health authorities if uh, <laughs> CAPS is right for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's rank this episode. All right, so just a quick reminder of the scale. Failure, participant, bronze, silver, gold, cubic zirconia for episodes that you think are ex- essential to the Simpsons experience. Start with you, Jacinda. Press is on. I think it's gold. Yep. I think it's gold. I wouldn't. I wouldn't give it cubic zirconia. I mean, I. I just love it because I love musicals. So, but I would give again. I keep talking about a streetcar named Marge is like I think an example of like a better musical episode if we're comparing the pair. And I would give that cubic zirconia. You know. Yeah. But it's really funny and it's really good. All gold. Right. Rosie. I think for how much of this is embedded into my mm. brain, I probably would do cubic zirconia. You do this, but I feel like I've also said that on this show before is like damn near everything from like three to eight i would probably (laughs) give that ranking like there's very little that i wouldn't put in that pantheon yeah that's why uh lauren and claire's podcast is focusing exclusively on that era it's yeah yeah. so is that a good bit of come come up with like an even more precise (laughs) ranking system Fourteen carat gold. Um. So was that uh, cubic for you? It's a CZ, baby. It's a CZ. <laughs> you should have like radio sound. I mean, I don't know how you're gonna edit it, but you should be like, mur, 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 or like some sort of fog horn. Or yeah, well, like, uh, surely there's like, like a heap of like dumb radio things from yeah. the Simpsons, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Toilet what flushing. A- <laughs> toilet flush. What a bunch of clowns. <laughs> How does it keep up with the news like that? <laughs> uh, freezing the machine. <laughs> uh, no, I'm giving it a gold as well. It, mm. It's like, like I said before, there are moments where they're clearly stretching for time in this one mm-hmm. and like kind of like clunk a little for me, but like not in a massive way. Yeah, I, I'm splitting hairs here. This is a gold for me and that'll equal a shiny gold, which yeah, sounds like a good ranking for this yeah. one. And yeah, what a good pod. Thank you both for joining me today. Oh Thanks my for God. Thank me. you for having me and giving me the excuse to talk about the thing that I love talking about and nobody else cares. <laughs> Thank you so very much. You and I, need, we live we near each other. We need to hang out and just talk about the Simpsons. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Oh my God. What am I doing? I mean, we've said this like every time that we've been somewhere <laughs> I together. Forgot, I forgot you were a Simpsons fan though. That really does elevate things oh, a huge. fair bit. <laughs> <laughs> Chill out. Order some Beyond Chicken. P- yeah, uh, pop yeah. some caps and throw on one of the playlists we're <laughs> talking about. <laughs> oh, that God, sounds that's so, so good. fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's actually do that let's before do it. the year's over. Oh, bro, let's fucking do it. What are you doing next week? Yeah, That's I'm, so keen. I'm on board. <laughs> Fuck yeah. All right, uh, before we get out of here, Jacinda, do you have anything to plug? Uh, th- oh. Where are you on the internet? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, find me on Instagram. I feel like my Instagram is where I post my comedy stuff, but it's also where I post my life stuff. But you know what? Hang out. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jaquinta underscore Peggery is my name. But I think if you write Jacinda, it'll pop up. Yeah, the only yeah major show that I'm doing this year, I'm doing um, character comedy shows mystery flight on the 9th of december at the comedy store um and playing a few christmas characters that you might recognize so come see it i feel like it'll be funny (laughs) (laughs) awesome Uh, how about you rosie anything to plug uh i'm at rose alice piper on instagram twitter if it still exists soon um (laughs) i think it will if you're in newcastle i'm doing a show at newcastle comedy club on the 4th of december at 7 p.m uh it's goddess it's the show that i just did in melbourne comedy festival this year which got a four and a half star review on the age so it's good so uh please come to that uh let me make it worth going up there (laughs) (laughs) yeah
It's no, a good show, please come. No, it is very good. No, absolutely wonderful show. Yeah, had a blast checking that out last time it was in town. And oh, bless your heart. And uh, yeah, uh, for anyone who wants to check out more of what I do, we have a Patreon here at SideQuest Studios. It is at patreon.com slash SideQuest Studios, where every week you'll get a bonus podcast doing a lot of Simpsons-focused content. Uh, One of the shows we're running at the moment is called Starring Springfield, where we're reviewing movies that star the cast of The Simpsons. And a Patreon perk is you get to suggest what movie we're going to review for that. But yeah, it's been a really weird, interesting cross section of movies. Like, of course, reviewed Heat um, and the '98 and Godzilla. She's got a great ass. <laughs> <laughs> he's staring at Hank Azaria in that scene. Yeah, That's yeah, who yeah. he's saying it to. Funny. <laughs> but yeah, reviewed also like Maximum Overdrive, which was like one of Yardley Smith's first roles, which is. Weird. And then they called. Isn't there an episode called Maximum Homer Drive? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, when he's yeah. uh, been a truck driver. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, all that and more over at Patreon.com/slash/SideQuest Studios. But yeah, that's it for the Simpsons Index this week. Thank you, Jacinda. <gasps> Thank you. Thank you, Rose. Thank you. And I've been Elliot J. Neal. That's all the mustard in the house. Thank you for listening to the Simpsons Index podcast, which is also an online spreadsheet available at thesimpsonsindex.com. You can also check out our other shows, like Pulp Fury Radio, our scripted fiction podcast, which tells all original stories across a range of pulp genres, and Thrones of Game, where we review Game of Thrones in reverse order. Links to those podcasts and more will be available in the show notes. Now, there's no bonus scenes for this episode, so we'll catch you next week.